Okay, welcome to a tutorial on the band stop filter. All right, so this kind of filter that the band stop filter we're talking about is also referred to as a band reject filter in you know some sort of textbooks. Okay, it's also known as the band reject filter. So whatever uh, you call it, basically the two names just mean the same. What the filter does if we just well look at the functional uh, point of view, uh, then the filter basically well it just attenuates a certain uh, group of frequencies. Okay, it attenuates a certain group of frequencies. Okay, right now these group of frequencies are just referred to as the yeah sorry there just be frequencies as plural okay so uh, right so this particular group of frequencies that we just referred to okay so this is also the um, uh, frequency or rather this is also referred to as the stop band okay so right so let's just not get into the technicalities right now so let's just uh, keep it simple this way that the band stop filter basically what it does is that it just attenuates a certain group of frequencies okay so any input signal belonging to this particular group of frequencies okay or rather this particular uh, band of frequencies they are just attenuated by the band stop filter and are just you know restricted or suppressed from appearing at its output okay so this is what the band stop filter does okay now to understand this uh, filter operation conceptually let's just take a look at the band pass filter once again okay I just like to relate the operation this way so imagine that you had a band pass filter as you'd seen in the uh, previous tutorial over there you found that well sorry there the lines a bit crooked okay this is better so the band pass filter if you're just talking about a band pass filter okay it is supposed to have a characteristic that would go somewhat this way right or rather uh, it would be a little bit uh, you know my drawings a bit crooked just kinda don't mind at that alright this would do so it would basically have a characteristic that should go somewhat this way okay and this is the gain versus frequency curve so this is basically the frequency response so the band pass filters frequency response okay frequency response curve rather is gonna look somewhat this way and we'd have the points known as the uh, lower cut of frequency okay of the um, well this is the lower cut of frequency of the high pass filter and this would be the upper cut of frequency that's FH okay of the low pass filter section now we know that in order to construct a band pass filter we had to well cascade a high pass filter section and a low pass filter section we used we just cascaded them together okay and then we got the band pass filter right so whenever you do that you'd have an upper cut of frequency of the low pass filter and a higher I mean and a lower cut of frequency of the high pass filter sections right and well this region okay now this particular region coming in between that of the lower and the upper cut of frequencies is just referred to as the pass band of this particular filter all right so you already know that now what I'm what I'm just trying to point out from over here is that you see uh, in order to construct a band pass filter it's very important that the upper cut of frequency of the uh, low pass filter should be greater than that of the lower pass I'm mean, sorry there, the lower cut of frequency of the high pass filter this is very important so I repeat once again that it it's very necessary that the upper cut of frequency of the low pass filter section be greater than the lower cut of frequency of the high pass filter sections only then can you just construct a band pass filter by cascading high pass and low pass filter stages right now this is the most important uh, you know condition over there uh, because if this happens only then we can we can basically get a common band between uh, the uh, low pass and the high pass filter sections but what if this uh, condition is just reversed so if we're just gonna reverse this 
condition then it's gonna look somewhat this way now if this condition is just reversed uh, this way then it's it's quite natural that the uh, graph I mean uh, the frequency response okay I mean both the low pass and the high pass filter sections would not have any common band between them right and correspondingly the frequency response I mean the frequency response curve basically well reverses too so as you can see in this particular figure if the curve just reverses along with the given condition over here if this is reversed the curve just reverses uh, you know upside down and then we can basically see that well the upper cutoff frequency of the low pass filter section well it just well um, is not greater than the lower cutoff frequency of the high pass filter section anymore okay so that way there is no common uh, you know frequency region between the two filters so basically what happens is that well we get a band stop filter instead now you can see that this, since there is uh, no uh, frequency range common okay between uh, the two uh, pass I mean between the pass bands of the two filter sections so that's why the band stop filter basically results now in this case here okay so these regions are going to be the regions okay that would basically I mean these regions would just contain the frequency components that would just appear at the filters output I mean at the band stop filters output unattenuated so it's quite natural that these areas would be just referred to as the pass bands okay so these would be uh, you know known as the pass band of this particular filter right and on the other hand now you can see that well uh, the frequency uh, I mean the frequency components between that of FH and FL okay within this particular region basically would just be attenuated by the filter okay and would be kept I mean, I mean and they would be just you know suppressed from peering at the output so this would just refer to as the stop band of this particular band stop filter okay so this is what the frequency response of a band stop filter looks like actually okay and uh, well if you just perform an experiment then you'll get the same sort of a curve right and like the uh, band pass filter there is also a center frequency component of the uh, you know yeah there you go referred to as FC so this is basically the center frequency uh, component of this particular band stop filter and this occurs uh, you know somewhere between that of FH and FL uh, like we've seen in the case of the band pass filter also okay so at this uh, you know frequency basically I and mean at the center frequency basically the attenuation provided by I mean given out by the band stop filter is at its maximum so you can see that well uh, at FC the uh, well the frequency components have almost been reduced to uh, you know zero gain okay they don't have any gain at all right and it's uh, quite an important uh, you know condition that the pass band gains well now this particular filter uh, let's just not get into that right now so you might be uh, asking that well how do we construct such a filter okay fine so keeping in mind the construction uh, you know uh, point of view well this sort of filter is also uh, obtained by using both the high pass filter and the low pass filter sections but this time they are not cascaded together instead so we'll end up with this particular uh, circuit for the band pot I mean sorry there band stop filter instead okay so well the circuit is big I know that so here you can see that we have well taken here a low pass filter section okay so you know, I'm encircling this entire stuff so this is our low pass I mean active low pass filter section and over here we have our active high pass filter section okay so this is our high pass filter section and what do we have here well this particular circuit is the circuit of that of a summing amplifier so this is basically a summing amplifier right so what does it do now you can basically you know from the uh, circuit over here you can get to uh, understand that the high pass and the low pass filter sections are not cascaded together I mean they're not well joined from the 
end to end with each other okay so that's that's what is called cascading so they're not basically cascaded okay instead they just their outputs are basically well sent to the input of the summing amplifier now if we just take the output from the high pass filter to be uh well known as v o um yeah just call it h p f and on the other hand the output of the low pass filter will be known as v o l p f okay then we know that the output from the uh, summing amplifier would be equal to well I'm just going to write that down over here v o equals to well uh minus you can see that the feedback resistor is basically R3, so we can just put it over here, minus R3 by that of, and uh, the resistors, uh, I mean the series input resistors, okay, connecting, uh, I mean to which uh, the outputs of the low pass and the high pass filter sections are just provided right over here, okay, they are basically, they're basically having the same value R2, okay, in both cases. So R3 by that of R2, all right, VO HPF okay plus that of v o l p f so this is what the output is basically going to look like okay if i would just or rather yeah let's just you know box it out that's better okay so the output from this entire circuit okay the output that's finally which we receive from the summing amplifier that's v o the final output of this entire circuit is uh, you know going to have an expression that's going to look something like this so well you know what the output of a low pass and a high pass filter section uh basically uh you know appears as okay it it has those kind of frequency responses you've already seen in the previous tutorial so in that case if we just go forward and connect uh an ac uh, source voltage okay at the input see it has a common input terminal as well so if we just provide, let's just call this one as v in Okay, so if we'd have this uh, input sinusoidal AC source, okay, providing uh, the same um, signal, okay, signals of the same frequencies to both of the low pass and the high pass filter sections, then what happens is that as we just go on increasing the frequency, okay, first the low pass filter gives an output, and at that time the high pass filter just, uh, you know, doesn't provide any output, okay, and after that, there is the you know the stop band reaching and at that time no op i mean none of the filters is produce any kind of output i mean both the both uh, the filters is, i mean filter sections basically will attenuate them okay and upon exceeding the upper cut of frequency the high pass filter produces i mean begins to produce the output voltages okay while the low pass filters would just basically attenuate those frequencies so if you just take a good look at the figure over here i mean the graph over here as a frequency response you see that when the uh, low pass filter so at this moment the low pass filter basically is giving the output okay now you can see that since the uh, final output consists of the individual outputs of the low pass and the high pass filter sections so whenever the low pass filter uh produces the output during uh the you know the low frequency stages okay whenever the frequencies are low the low pass filter begins to basically uh you know produce the output uh, until and unless its upper cut of frequency is reached okay and whenever the upper cut of frequency is reached uh, after that uh, right so after exceeding the upper cut of frequency it just begins to attenuate its output and then the stop band is reached and at that time well let's just uh, keep it simple over here so what we get over here is that during the lower pass band okay so this is the first part of the pass band okay the lower frequency part so at this moment the lower i mean the low pass filter basically produces the output and the high pass filter basically attenuates those frequencies all right now the output from the uh, summing amplifier is due to the low pass filters output only and now after the upper cut of frequency of the low pass filter is uh, exceeded then we enter the stop band okay now the low pass filter basically begins to attenuate those frequencies that are above that of its upper cut of frequency all right and then after uh, reaching the lower cut of frequency of the high pass filter well the high pass filter begins to come to life okay it begins to uh, generate uh, output 
okay the output of the uh, high pass filter uh, you know begins to take some uh, magnitude while that of the low pass filter well begins to uh, attenuate those frequency components so higher frequency components over here are just passed by the high pass filter itself whenever we just exceed the uh, lower kind of frequency of the high pass filter so the second pass band okay the output produced okay the frequencies that are just produced at the output those components are uh, basically due to the high pass filter output only okay and at this moment the low pass filter what it does is that it just basically will attenuates those frequencies so this is how the uh, circuit over here actually works okay and it's quite an important uh, you know condition that the gains okay the pass band gains of both the filter sections they are the same so if we just take it as AF in this case so the pass band gains of both the filter sections should be the same otherwise uh, we're gonna have you know different degrees of amplification uh, in case of uh, the different pass bands so that's gonna cause uh, you know some sort of problems so you gotta avoid that sort of situation from happening so it's uh, quite necessary that the pass band gains of uh, both I mean of both the pass bands over here remain the same okay and of course at the lower and the upper kind of frequency of the corresponding filters sections itself uh, the gain just drops to about one by root two times its maximum value uh, of that you know produced at the pass band uh, areas okay so saying that we just reach the end of this uh, tutorial uh, video where we've just you know explained what I mean in what way the uh, you know the band's tough filter circuit basically works so I'm just gonna you know enclose it over here with this uh, yellow circle right so this is basically the entire circuit of that of the uh, band stop or band reject filter okay that you can basically see over here now the reason for using the summing amplifier is that you know basically since both the filter sections that don't have any common uh, you know band that they could pass so it's quite uh, you know um, a common sense matter rather that if we would basically you know cascade them then uh, none would just be able to produce their outputs so it's better that they just sent to a summing amplifier which produces it okay so having said that we just uh, you know bid you goodbye for right now and we hope to see you in the next tutorial so till then is it goodbye for now and thanks for watching